Hello! Let's once again get our hands dirty with a bond valuation example. In this video, we'll deal with a semi-annual coupon bond. Let's go through our example. Calculate the value or price of a two-year 6% bond with semi-annual interest payments and a face value of $100 if the annual market discount rate is 7%. Let's focus on the important pieces of information. We want to calculate the value or price, which as was the case in the bond valuation example we saw in the previous video, equals the present value of the bond's promise payments. We have a two-year 6% bond, so it matures in two years. The 6% is the coupon rate, and I wrote it this way, that is without specifying that it is the coupon rate, on purpose. And the reason is because I wanted to familiarize you with the fact that sometimes it is given in this manner, without being explicitly specified. So whenever you see it expressed this way, you will now be able to realize that the percentage refers to the coupon rate. Moving on, we have semi-annual interest payments. And this is the same as saying that the periodicity equals 2. In other words, this bond pays interest or coupons once every six months or twice per year. And since it matures in two years, it will make four payments in total. The bond has a face value of $100. And this is the same as the par value. Now that we know this, let's calculate the coupon payments. The coupon rate is always by convention the annual interest as a percentage of par, and this is not affected by the periodicity or frequency of coupon payments, that is by how often coupon payments are made. So if you were to use the 6% coupon rate and calculate the coupon payments as 100 times 0.06, for a final value of $6, this would be correct if we had annual coupon payments, as was the case in the example we saw in the previous video. But over here, the periodicity equals 2 because we have semi-annual coupon payments. Therefore, before calculating the coupon payments, we need to divide the coupon rate by the periodicity. This will give us 3%, 6% over 2. Now we have what we need to calculate our coupon payments, and those will be 100 times 0.03, that is $3 per 6-month period. Alternatively, you can calculate the coupon payments as if this bond was an annual pay one, something which will give you these $6, and then divide that by 2 to get to the $3 we got, which is consistent with a periodicity of 2. Let's now move on to the last bit of important information. The annual market discount rate is 7%, and this is what we called the yield to maturity, or YTM, and denoted with Y in the previous video. But this is an annual rate. Therefore, as was the case with the coupon rate, we need to divide it by the periodicity in order to get the appropriate rate to use when we discount our cash flows to take them in present value terms. And as you can see, 7% over 2 gives us 3.5%. Now we have everything we need to calculate the value of this bond. Let's do this on the next slide. You can see the bond's promised cash flows on the timeline. And this time around, I've set it up in a way that the numbers on the timeline correspond to semi-annual periods, that is, six-month periods. For example, this 2 over here is the same as two semi-annual periods or one year. This 3 corresponds to three semi-annual periods or one and a half year. The same logic applies for the other periods depicted on the timeline. The last payment in year 2, that is in the fourth semi-annual period, comprises of the last coupon payment and the bond's par value. So let's now calculate the bond's value or price. This equals 3 over 1.035 to the first power to discount the first coupon payment, plus 3 over 1.035 squared to discount the second one, and so on and so forth for the remaining ones. 
By now, you are provisioning this, so we don't need to go through it in detail. If not, then just blame me for being a bad teacher. Before we move on, one important note. Notice that the exponents in the denominators also correspond to semi-annual periods. Had do we not adjusted the yield to maturity by dividing by the periodicity, we would not be able to do this. Moving on, the discounted values are the following. And they give us a final value of $98.17 rounded to two decimals. And to run an equivalent analysis to the one we ran in the previous video, notice that the price of this bond is lower than its par value or face value of 100. Therefore, the bond is trading at a discount to par. And the reason is because the bond's coupon rate is lower than its yield to maturity. The yield to maturity reflects the rate of return investors require to invest in this bond. But investors get a return, which is reflected by the coupon rate, that is lower than what they require. Therefore, investors are willing to purchase this bond at a discount, that is pay a price that is lower than the bond's par value, to make up for the difference between the coupon rate and the required rate. Notice that I present this in annual terms, but even if I had divided by the periodicity, the inequality does not change. I really hope you enjoyed this problem.